Hello friends and welcome back to The Dork Side. I'm the dork in the road and today it's my review of the New Air 115 quart electric cooler. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet writing buddy so please consider subscribing. Today's video is sponsored by New Air and New Air was cool enough pun intended, to send me their 115 quart electric cooler to try out. Uh, the first thing I did with it was take it on a road trip with my wife. Second thing I did with it was take it with me to the Giant Loop ride to get some real field testing. And I've got a bunch of footage of that which I will put in for you right now and then I'll come back here to the garage in the future of that footage to kind of give you my final impressions, final thoughts on the unit. So let's check out the field test first. So this is the New Air 115 quart electric cooler. They sent it to me to review. I'm currently packing up my trailer and my truck to head out to the Giant Loop ride, which is a weekend rally. It's about six hours from here in the desert. Uh, I'm not gonna take a cooler this time. I'm gonna take the electric cooler. I'm gonna put all my beverages in it. I'm gonna run it off of my truck and we're just gonna see how it does. So first of all, easiest thing to notice is that it has two doors and these are temperature controllable separately. So you can do one as a fridge and one as a freezer or you can do what I did on the last trip and they were both fridges. I didn't need a freezer. Uh, these things are huge. So you can see there's a 12 pack vertically in there. I've got two other 12 packs and you know, be nice. I'm trying to do the low carb thing so. Not, uh, not exactly stocked full of IPAs, but will survive. But look, I've got all this space left. This thing is massive, dude. Like, there's, there's my hand for scale. So I got a Costco 36 pack in here. I'll actually put a picture of that in for you. So tons and tons of room, and this is only half of it. This thing's 115 quarts, so it's massive. This is the other side. This is the freezer side, and there's a little extra space down underneath, and then the compressor is right here. Um, but again, I've just got it set to refrigerator with some, you know, sandwich and sa salad and stuff in here. And again, I've got tons of room. Look, it's just enormous. It has a built-in bottle opener. It has these really cool rugged wheels. And this thing is heavy, so it's really nice to have the wheels for rolling it around. It has a carry handle, which is extendable. And here's the control panel. So left side's at 32. Right side's 39 because I just opened it. But you can set it to whatever you want. And the other thing is, see this here, that's the battery. So um, it is plugged in at the moment, but they also sent me the battery and so that you can get the, ad the additional battery with it. And in my testing here in the garage, the battery lasted 12 hours after I unplugged it. So this thing is basically perfect if you're going on a road trip and stopping every day, because the car will charge the battery and keep the cooler going during the day, and then the battery will keep it running at night. And uh, I'm gonna try to extend that a little more because this is a four day trip I'm going on. So I will charge it in the truck as I'm driving and then uh, charge it with the truck every day by just starting it or just see how cold it stays. Because the other thing is it's also a cooler. It's not just an electric cooler. It just stays cold. So, so far really impressed with this thing. The build quality is fantastic. You could stand on it. You can jump on it. Uh, it fits perfectly in the back of my wife's CRV. I got a picture that I'll put in for you. So we just loaded it in the truck and it's in the back seat. And you may be like, why don't you put it in the bed of the truck? And that's a valid question. And the answer is because it's going to be warm outside when we get there, and I don't want it sitting in the sun all day. I don't know if baking in a hot truck is any better, but this is what we went with, so there it is. Uh, but this, again, is the 115 quart, so I kind of feel like I'm testing the concept as well as this individual one, because I think if you had the 80 or the smaller one, it would work equally well. So this one is admittedly a little big for the inside of the truck. We just barely got it in. I think an 80 or something would have worked better for inside. I could also put this in the trailer, but I want to be able to plug it in here in the truck, and I don't have electric in the trailer. If I did, it would definitely be in there. But anyway, I just want to show you. So it's in the back seat. You can see I've got full access to all, everything inside. Control panel's here, and as soon as the truck is rolling, it'll be powering it through this 12-volt plug, which I have in the back seat. It's got, like, seriously, a 12-foot cord, so I had it plugged in up front in my wife's car, and it was in the very back of the car, and the cord was plenty long enough. So I could literally have this in the bed of the truck all the way at the back and run that cable out through my split window and be okay. So they give you a really long 12-volt plug, which is nice. So, yeah, it's pretty big in there. It's pretty big, but... It's gonna do the job, I think, perfectly. Pretty excited about it, so. I'm gonna get loaded up and go. It's gonna be a great trip. Just wanna take a minute and check in with you about the New Air electric cooler. So it is the third day I've been running it, and I haven't started the truck in two days. I did have a drive out here on the second day, so I guess this is the fourth day I've been running it. And all I did was I threw my solar panel on the roof. Here, I'll show you. Plugged it into my to-go power, and then plugged my 
cooler into the to-go power. So the to-go power is dead now because it's been running the cooler all night. So basically between those two things, I was able to keep this thing running overnight, every night, and then get the battery charged up enough during the day with the solar panel. So it's still running. And it's been three days since I started this truck and tried to charge it. Uh, it's on just battery right now. Pretty happy with that so far. Everything's still cold. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be using this thing a lot, but that's where we're at on, what day is it? Day three of this trip or day four? Yeah, day three or four depending on who you ask. Three nights, four days, day four of this trip. That's where we're at, so. That's the update on the cooler. Little update on the new air cooler. And I legitimately did not think this was gonna happen, but between that battery and uh, and using the solar panel and charging it off the to-go power, it still has power. Like my, my sodas and other beverages are still cold. And this is day four of this trip. So this is the first time I started the truck. That's an impressive little piece of kit. So thanks for sending me that new air. So my favorite things about this machine, having used it now on a couple trips, uh, one, it's very cold. My drinks were very cold and there's no ice required. You don't need any ice. So I'm not dealing with draining ice. I'm not dealing with buying ice all the time and it keeps it colder than my cooler does with ice in it. Uh, it works really well and the battery lasts a long time. I was getting 10 or 11 hours out of the battery depending on how hot it is outside and stuff like that. But uh, that's easily overnight between, especially if you're out on a car trip or you're camping multiple days in a row and traveling. That's totally enough to get you through the night. And even if the battery dies, it still stays cool inside because the thing is a cooler. So it takes a while for that stuff to warm up. So your stuff is staying cold, even if it's not plugged in. This thing is massive. So you probably could get, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 cans in one side if that's what you're taking. And I had a bunch of food over on the other side. The design is very sturdy. You can stand on it, you can sit on it. Uh, I dragged it across the ground in the gravel. You know, I don't know, you might be able to park your motorcycle on it. I didn't really try. Also, that battery protection feature is, is huge, I think. One of the big concerns about running something like this off your car battery is that you'll get out there in the morning, you won't be able to start it, or your deep cycle battery, or your RV battery, or whatever, and um, you can set it so that it'll shut off, and that prevents that from being any kind of threat at all. So that's a pretty cool feature, which I liked. But it's not perfect, so what, what are the cons? What are things to consider? What are things to know? What are things that maybe I like less about it? One, I think is pretty obvious. This thing is massive. So this is a 115 quart cooler. You know, it's about four feet wide. Um, I got it in the back seat of my truck, but barely. Uh, it took up almost all the space behind the seat of my wife's CRV. So it's a very, very big cooler. If you need big space, that's a huge advantage. Um, if you're just trying to take some sodas for a weekend, maybe it's too much cooler for that. It's pretty big. Um, it's also heavy because it's so large. And this one is not cheap. It's pretty expensive. This is a thousand dollar electric cooler. It's really a fridge, right? Um, but those three things being the biggest cons um, can be mitigated by not getting the 115 quart. They also make a 48 and an 80 quart. I honestly think the 48 would maybe be better for the types of camping that I do or even the 60. That would fit very easily a lot of other places. So if you like the idea but you don't like the price tag, I'd encourage you to check out those smaller versions also on their website. I'm assuming they'll be just as sturdy and reliable and work just as well. Um, and the other big con there is that the battery doesn't come with it. So you have to pay an additional price on top of the $1,000 that the cooler costs to get a battery, which um, again is cheaper if you get the smaller one or if you don't need the battery because you have a battery charging setup already. You don't, it's not a requirement, it's not a must have. So overall, uh, taking those, those few cons into consideration, I have to say it's a very impressive piece of kit. This is the ultimate road trip companion. If you're driving and stopping for the night and driving and stopping for the night with the battery, this thing will keep everything ice cold for your whole trip. Uh, all your food. You can take stuff that you wouldn't maybe think about taking because coolers get warm and cold and you have to deal with ice. No ice to deal with, none of that. So you'll never have to buy ice again if you're using this thing. The controls are pretty easy to use. It cools down very fast and stays very cold. It's considerate of your power usage. It keeps it from draining your battery, which is nice. And it can be used for different types of camping too. So I took it on that giant loop ride trip. That was a four day trip. I didn't start my truck at all until the last day. All I did was during the day, I plugged my solar panel into my to go power and I plug the to go power into this, which you guys saw, and that kept the battery charged enough to keep this thing running for two and a half, three days while I was at camp without starting my truck at all. I honestly did not expect that to work. I sort of thought I'd just be dealing with warm sodas and other beverages for the last day or last two days, but I managed to keep it cold and keep it going and that impressed me. So there's a lot of different ways to charge it and I think if you're creative uh, or just a little bit more of an electrical engineer than me because I don't even have a deep cycle battery in my trailer. If I did, it wouldn't be a problem, right? Or a bigger battery pack would work for it. So lots of different ways to make it work. Impressed with that. Uh, we also used it on a trip to, uh, to Duck Fan's dad's cabin. We plugged it in in the car on the way there. We took it out of the car, wheeled it in the house and plugged it in. 
I didn't have to unload all the stuff that was in it. We had our beverages ready and easily accessible. Uh, and I didn't have to deal with ice or anything. And then when we were done, I put it back in the car, plugged it back in, run it home. The stuff never, ever got warm. So great for something like that. And again, if the 115 is a little big for you, they do make smaller sizes. Uh, that's my review of the New Air 115 quart electric cooler. Pretty cool piece of kit. And again, I want to thank New Air for sponsoring this video and for sending me this cooler to try out. And it is something that I will be using a lot in future trips to like rallies that I go to in the truck or I camp in the truck and just take the bike in the trailer. It's gonna be great for that. So thank you to them. So if you wanna get one of these your own, there's a link in the description that is an affiliate link, so I do get a little commission if you decide to buy it. Uh, but you can use promo code ROAD10, ROAD10, all one word, to save 10% off of one of these bad boys of your own. And you know that's not nothing, that's $100 off. So definitely use that code if you decide to buy one. But either way, go check out their website. They got some cool products, uh, humidors and other things like that. And it's a neat company, and I think it's a sturdy, sturdy product, so I enjoyed using it and will continue to use it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching, and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, thank you. Excellent! Yay!